happens every week. We still have to keep making meals for our families. I am going to share with you my tried and true system for outsourcing all of the preparing and the cooking of meals and how that frees up my time and allows me to buy it back. I'm Tamson Horton. I really help people go from ideas to income. And this is part of my outsourcing series that's based on how you can outsource stuff that's really close to you, that's really easy, and use that time to do more of what you love, to work on your business versus just working in it. So this is cleaning and or cleaning up after meals and preparing them. So first off, if you haven't watched the meal planning video, you might want to go back and watch that one because this is part two. And the reason that I say you can outsource all of this is because some your best team is your home team. So often people are like, oh, I've got to, you know, hire a cook or hire a nanny or hire a housekeeper. That's that's totally fine. But really start close. Start in the concentric circles that are closest to you, and those are the people in your home. So once you have your meals done, you've done the grocery shopping or had the groceries delivered, then it comes time for preparing it. So here, this is where, again, we're going to ask the same three questions. Who is the best person to do the prep work? And is it best to do the prep work on the day or to do like we do where we have like kind of a power cooking day on Sundays um, where we kind of get everything ready for the week that we can ahead of time. So the best person for preparing might be the same person all the time, or you might want to rotate and change it up throughout the week. So that's the first part is who's the best person to do the preparing. The second part is when is the best time for them to do it? Again, maybe it is best to say, you know what, for an hour on this day, I'm going to, you know, cut clean and cut up the vegetables. I'm going to cook up the quinoa or the rice. I'm going to have, you know, prepare out per portions of maybe your proteins. So that may happen on one day or it may happen the day up. You are the person that knows the routine and the flexibility that your family is currently operating under. Then the third question is, how do we make it simple? So I'm always looking for ways that make life simpler, including the prep work. And really when it comes to prep, then I'm talking more about the tools that you're using. So are there ways, for instance, for us, how to make it simpler? I got a Vitamix blender. I It works great for leftovers in the winter because we just throw leftovers in and voila, we have amazing, unique, one-of-a-kind soups that we enjoy and then they never turn out the same way twice. Uh, in the summer, it's lots of smoothies. So as you're looking at your prep, look at how are you doing it? Are you running around your kitchen all the time? Like one thing here, one thing there. If you are, then take a step back and look at your kitchen. Look at your you know different zones. Doesn't matter what the size of your kitchen is. You, Really small places can be incredibly efficient and really big places can be highly inefficient. So that part, size really is not a consideration. You just want to think smart as you're preparing. You know, if I'm doing our morning, you know, breakfast stuff, all the stuff I need for coffee or tea or smoothies is all literally in one spot in the kitchen. So that's the prep portion. Then what I like, is if someone's doing the preparing or the cooking of the meal, then probably other people should do the cleanup. So that's not just on one person. But again, you know your family the best. So if Chris and Kip are cooking dinner, then I will tend to do the cleanup part. You know, put the dishes in the dishwasher, clean up afterwards, and vice versa. So, and you can change that part of it up. And one thing that I would recommend is watch the video on my popsicle stick system because the, how you divide this up might be on who wants the popsicle sticks, who wants to get the uh, chore or the benefit or the bonus, whatever, however you set it up in your home, and use the popsicle sticks to keep track of who is doing what and who's being rewarded for what because 
we're all rewarded based on the effort that we put into our businesses or our careers. We work for the bonuses. We work for the, you know, additional whatever it is, the, you know, increased number of people that sign up for a challenge, the number of people that buy something that you are offering, the promotion you want at work. Your home is no different, you know? Everyone says, ooh, gamification. Gam gamify your home. Make it really fun because you're spending a lot of time in your home and it should be fun. It should be enjoyable. And just because it's something that might currently feel a little mundane and repetitive, like making your dinners or your meals and cleaning them up, it doesn't have to be. You can find really fun ways to gamify those. And again, I'll link to the um, popsicle sticks because popsicle sticks is how we run everything and they are seriously the best thing ever. They're so easy. They're so, so easy. So that is the cooking or the prep and the cooking and then the cleanup portion for meal planning is who is the best person to be doing that role? When is the best time for them to do it? And how can you make it simple? So I would love to know, especially on the simple part, how do you keep making the meals and cleaning up after the meals easy and fun? So that, that's it. That's all I got for you on part two of meal planning for families. Have a great day and I will catch you soon. Bye-bye.